master factoring techniques will make it absolutely simple for you with hundreds of examples. Follow our playlist to practice and master these techniques. Thank you. I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. In this video, we'll master factoring strategies. In my playlist, you'll find hundreds of videos on factoring strategies and practicing how do we factor. Now here are some examples. You can treat this as a worksheet. So we'll take up examples where the coefficient of x squared is 1 of the form x squared plus bx plus c. So based on this, we have 10 examples for you. You can actually copy these questions, practice, and then look into my solutions. Sometimes we group them and multiply the whole term with a factor. So it may take this kind of a form where the trinomial can have a common factor all three of them, right? So for that, we have these uh, five examples. Many times you're working with difference of squares. So with difference of squares, we have a few examples for you. Continued on the next page, making them 10. And then we'll have factoring where the coefficient of x squared is not one. So when it is not one, it requires slightly more steps so, so those are the questions which you may have to look into and practice. Some of them can be difficult and time consuming. Okay. Then we have, uh, well, similar kind where we have x and y two parameters involved in the trinomial and that should help you to understand the whole concept. Well, these factoring techniques are used widely to solve equations or to simplify equations. So, for example, we could have a rational function where a trinomial is in the numerator, a trinomial is in the denominator. You could actually do many things with such equations. One is, if I say this is equal to 0, let's say if I say that function f of x is equal to 0, we can solve, right? or we can find restrictions. So restrictions really mean that the denominator is not equal to zero, right? So that also you can find with the help of factoring. So, I mean, there are a lot of examples here itself. And there are many other videos where we are showing you how do we factor using tiles and many other techniques. So if you really want to master this particular topic, for that matter, any topic, you can visit our channel or you can take guidance directly uh, from me by sending an email. We have over 20,000 videos on our channel. After attending university, Join our classes the winner of and this year's accept. Achievement Shulik Leader Award is Akshi Kandivani. <laughs> Great. Our student, Akshit, gets highest marks and the most prestigious Shulek Leader Award. You can be there. Join our classes and excel. Okay. So let's begin with the very first set of questions. So what I'm going to do here is provide you solutions for uh, the first set, 10 of them. Uh, where y equals to x squared plus bx plus c because I don't really want to bore you for a long time. So we'll just have 10 solutions now and later we'll take another video for the uh, rest of them. Okay, so when you have a form which is y equals to x squared plus bx plus c, uh, you could uh, easily factor these only if, so remember one, it can be factored only if we have Two numbers, we always, I always prefer to write P and Q, whose product is the constant C, right? And whose sum, P plus Q, is equal to B. 
And when we are saying factor, we are saying that P and Q are integers. Make sense? So, I mean, you can always factor using a quadratic formula, get some decimal values. But here, our focus is factor fully over the numbers, which are integers. You get the idea? So, P and Q will be integers. So, that's kind of important to understand. Also, remember that all trinomials cannot be factored. So, so sometimes the condition is if only, right? I have uh, taken examples which can be factored and therefore I am not writing that condition. So, so the key here is to find two numbers whose product is this constant, right? So, this constant should be the product and the sum should be coefficient of x. Get the idea. So, in the very first one, for example, we need to find product of two numbers which could be 6, right? So, how can you get 6 and 5 as the sum, well, as you know, 3 times 2, right? 3 times 2 is equal to 6. And you also know that 3 plus 2 is 5, right? So, that matches with the condition. And therefore, you can now factor it. And so, you could write this as, because these two numbers make up this requirement of product and sum. Therefore, we could now factor this as equal to x, that one number is 3, the other is 2, right? So, order does not matter. You can write any one before or after. Product remains the same, right? It's commutative property of products. Do you see that? So, that is how simple it is. Perfect. Let's take up the next example. We want product of 10, sum of 11. Means 10 times 1, right? So, I'll write now 10 times 1 is 10 and also we know that 10 plus 1 is 11, correct? And therefore, I could now write down the factored form as x plus 10 times x plus 1. You can actually expand these and confirm that it is the correct answer, correct? Next one, we need product of minus 12. So, that means one number is going to be positive, one negative. And we want sum of being positive. That means bigger number is positive, right? So, bigger number is positive. We'll take this and 4 times 3. But 3 should be negative since we want negative 12. And as you know, 4 minus 3 is equal to 1. Makes sense, right? And clearly, uh, we could now write down this factored form as x plus 4 times x minus 3. Do you see how simple it is? So, the key idea here is to find two numbers whose product is the constant, include the sign. Minus 15 this time, right? So, 5 and 3 and positive number is greater. So, we get 5 and minus 3 this time. Since we know that 5 minus 3 is also 2, positive and that works, correct? And so, we can this time also write down our answer, simple x plus 5 times x minus 3. So, I hope you are with me getting all these very clearly, correct? Now, 24. We want 24 and the sum is minus 2. That means 6 and 4 can work, right? Simple as that. 6 and 4, perfect. But we need minus. So, bigger number is negative, right? So, we have minus 6 and plus 4, right? So, we know that minus 6 plus 4 is equals to minus 2. That works for us and therefore, we can now write it down as x minus 6 times x plus 4. Do you see how easy this exercise is? So, we have come to this conclusion. It doesn't take more than a minute to do any one of them, right? So, here is for you to practice, correct? So, can you have a look at it and practice. So, basically, we are looking for product of minus 6, sum of 3. So, how do you get that? Well, minus 6 and 3 means 3 times 2, right? A bigger number is positive. So, we have 3 times 2. And we also know that 
1 has to be negative, so smaller number negative, correct? Since 3 minus 2 is 1 which we are looking for, right? And therefore, we could write this as x plus 3 times x minus 2. Make sense? Beautiful. So that is how you have to do it. 10 minus 3 minus 10 minus 3, 5 times 2, right? 5 being bigger number, negative, right? This time, so we know minus 5 plus 2 is minus 3. It works for us, right? So we can write this as x minus 5 times x plus 2. So do you see how easy it is? I hope by now you have understood the technique and you can easily do the rest, right? But anyway, let me just confirm that you have all the knowledge required to factor these trinomials where the coefficient of x squared is 1, which we also call leading coefficient, right? So in this case, leading coefficient is 1. That is to say, a value is 1. Perfect. So, minus 12, I hope you got this 6 and 2, 6 being positive, 2 being negative. When you add them, you get what? You get plus 4, which we need. So, x plus 6 times x minus 2 is my answer. Next one, we want 15. And adding these numbers, we want negative 15 and negative 14 means what could I do? Well, negative is the product means one number is positive, one is negative. So, 15 times what? 1, right? So, minus 15 times plus 1 does the trick for us, right? Minus 15 plus 1 is minus 14. And therefore, we get x minus 15 times x plus 1. Got it. The last one, minus 20 and 19 means 20 times 1, right? So, so this time 20 will be positive, 1 will be negative, And you can uh, complete this exercise. Uh, since we know 20 minus 1 is 19, we'll write this as x plus 20 times x minus 1. Do you see how simple it is? So that is how we are going to factor these trinomials. I hope the concept is absolutely clear. So let's take some more uh, where the group is involved. Right? So here you will notice that we have a common factor. So what you should do, first you factor out the common thing wherever you find and then apply the product and sum, right? So let me do some of them for you. So for example here, 2 is common, right? So I can take 2 here and then within the brackets dividing by 2, this is group factoring plus 4x minus 12. You get the idea. And here we have 3 as common, right? So you get what? You get x squared minus 3x minus 10, right? And then here, nothing. We could go direct here. In this case, well, 2 is common in this case, right? So, factor out 2. And then you have x squared minus 16x plus 15, correct? And in this case, again, 2 is common, right? So, we have x squared plus 3x plus 2, right? So, once you have done that, then you can continue with the strategy, which we learned. The strategy was very simple. We have to find product of two numbers, which gives you the constant. In this case, for example, constant being 12. So we are looking for two numbers, which will give me 12, 6 times 2, right? And negative 12 means bigger number is positive, since I need positive 4. So 6 times minus 2 will make the trick, right? So let me not write equal to. I'll factor it. Since we know that 6 times 6 minus 2 is plus 4, so it meets the criteria, which is what we explored earlier. And therefore, we could say, well, all this is equal to x plus 6 times x minus 2. Correct? So that is how you have to factor. Now, once you do group factoring, let's begin with the first question. What do you get? Minus 12 and 4. We just now did that, right? So basically, it is minus 12 plus 4, 2 already factored out, you get the idea, and we get x minus 2. You see, it is a similar thing which we did in the past 10 questions. The only thing is that we need to factor this out first, correct? So minus 10, how do you get minus 10? 5 times 2, right? 
And since we need a negative number, 5 has to be negative. But don't forget to write 3 here, right? So, x minus 5 times x plus 2 gives us the answer. So, the next one here will be 2 times what? Well, it is 2 times. We need 15, but positive, And the sum is minus 16. That means both the numbers should be negative, right? So, x minus 1 and x minus 15 will do the trick. Now, here we need 2. And 2, you can get by multiplying 2 times 1 and 3. That's good. So, you could do this as x plus 2 times x plus 1. Perfect. So, in this video, we have seen how do we factor trinomials when the leading coefficient a is 1 or we have a common factor which is, I have taken this as some constant p and then same strategy. Now, in the next video, we will explore how do we do difference of squares and then we are going to take up other questions where the leading coefficient is not 1. Perfect. So, I hope with this you have learned some concepts of factoring and I hope you find them easy and useful. Feel free to share your comments and suggestions. In case you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Also, post the questions if you have any and in case you want to learn from me, do send an email on the address given. We can always take you through this success path with great concepts. Thank you and all the best.